Hello everyone and welcome back to JT on the Go. So today we are at the most popular zoo in the world, the San Diego Zoo. Now don't get too confused about this because there's another zoo around here called the Safari Park which is run by this organization. So let's discover this popular zoo. As you Google the world's top zoo, the San Diego Zoo is always ranked number one, located in San Diego, California. The release of the parrots marked the opening of the zoo every morning. San Diego Zoo is officially open. Thank you so much for being allies for wildlife and enjoy your day here at the World. The zoo is large up and down, so come up with a plan. I recommend seeing all of the primates first thing because they are the most active in the morning. To enter a bird enclosure like the Parker Aviary, you have to open the first door. Once the first door closes, then you can open the second door. This technique is to prevent the birds from escaping. When you are done, you repeat the same process when exiting. It is very shady out here. In this part of the zoo, there is also a tank with a crocodile. In this section of glass boxes, there were creatures I have never seen before. The apes were not very active at the time. They were in chill mode. The San Diego Zoo spans over 100 acres and is home to 14,000 animals that are rare and sadly endangered. The zoo is less than a five minute drive from downtown San Diego. Known for its state-of-the-art exhibits and state-of-the-art facilities, the zoo has a rich history. The zoo was founded in 1916 by Dr. Harry Wedgfer, who was inspired by a roar of a lion in the distance while visiting the Panama, California exposition here at Balboa Park, the current location of the San Diego Zoo. In later years, visionary leaders contributed to the effort in transforming the San Diego Zoo into a beloved attraction and tourist location that is today enjoyed by San Diego locals and visitors internationally and domestically. Some of the smaller monkeys are kept in a netted enclosure kind of like birds because they can climb. In this video, I will go over what I recommend visiting when visiting this zoo and how to get around the zoo. Before you visit, download the San Diego Zoo Travel Guide app to get most of your visit out of the San Diego Zoo. You can find directions to your must-see animals, dining options, and shopping experiences. There goes another viewpoint. Wait a minute, we did see the same enclosure. The next enclosure we crossed has a crocodile. He was hard to find. At every enclosure, there are signs that provide information on the animals living in the enclosure you are standing in front of. These two animals here are known as the Malayan Tapper. They are endangered, sadly. The reason is deforestation for agriculture, mining, and commercial projects. They were also hunted and poached. There are only 2,500 of them left. In some areas by the enclosures, be sure to hold on to your cameras and phones when taking pictures or videos. Because if you drop them in there, you cannot go in there and get them. One thing I recommend doing is the bus tour. If you are visiting the zoo for the first time, I recommend doing the bus tour. Not just because it's fun, but after the 35 minute ride, you will have an idea of what you want to do next. The tour is included with your admission and it travels along the zoo's most popular exhibits. The main bus station was built in 1956 and the first tour occurred in 1964 and it was led by a female driver. The lower deck is on the left and the upper deck is on the right. Double decker buses like this one will give you a unique view of the park. To avoid the crowds, I recommend taking it as early as you can like we did. This also goes to the Sky Fari, which I'll explain later. We will be back to where we started after the ride. The tour guide will share information, history, tips, and news about the animals. The zoos that we visit also teach us about conservation and environmental awareness. Stuff like poaching and deforestation have caused animals to go endangered. A lot of people will say, 
squirrels or groundhogs or sometimes by now we are in the elephant odyssey which is where you will find elephants you can tell that they have invested big dollars to replicate the elephant natural environment you can even stand while the bus is in motion those rocks in the distance are the zoo's African rock section. That is where you would find animals from Africa. Some portions, the sidewalks happen to be part of the bus routes. Here is the exit. The bus tour is a must-see and a highlight when visiting the San Diego Zoo. Next is the Skyfari. If you are not afraid of heights, I recommend the Skyfari. The station closest to the entrance is the Alaska Airlines Skyfari East. The station near the northern frontier section is the Alaska Airlines Skyfari West. The lines get very long, but the views are worth the wait. We're off. The Skyfari is another way to get views of the zoo and its surroundings. For all the gondolas, they put birds on them to show birds flying in the air. The reason why the gondolas are blue is to blend in with the sky. We are flying over both Lost Forest and Asian Passage exhibits. Here's the end point of our journey. If you want to do the Sky Ferrari again, you have to wait in line at the entrance. A lot of the animals are hard to find in these enclosures. Carnivorous plants are plants that happen to eat meat. Many plants make their own food, but there are some that eat animals. My goodness, these things are no joke. Here is the Basher Bridge. It crosses the Asian Passage. It opened in 2017 and is the heart of the San Diego Zoo. The Elephant Odyssey is the state-of-the-art facility that showcases the animals and ecosystems that existed in California during the very last ice age. Tar pits like this one educate visitors about extinct species that once lived here in California. Extinct means that a specific species is gone forever and it will never come back. African and Asian elephants call the area home. That is where the section of the zoo got its name. Elephants are known for being some of the largest land mammals on earth, known for their features and social behaviors. There is a facility where they take care of the elephants. To categorize the difference between African and Asian elephants is that African elephants have bigger ears that resemble the continent of Africa. They also have longer tusks. Unfortunately, that is why they are being poached. The poachers want a substance called ivory that is found in elephant tusks, used to make stuff like jewelry and piano keys. Asian elephants' ears are smaller, and only some males in the species have tusks. You can also find lions, jaguars, camels, llamas, and California condors here as well. The Elephant Odyssey is another must-see section of the zoo. Another way to get around is the kangaroo bus. All buses will have a sign telling you which ones are for the bus tour and which ones are kangaroo buses. The kangaroo bus will stop at the zoo's most popular exhibits. We got off near the Asian Passage. Interesting. Here is where you would find Asian leopards. This enclosure even has sky bridges for them to get across the pedestrian road. Well done. Back near the entrance is another aviary. In all of these aviaries, the birds are hard to catch on camera because they are either flying or taking cover. 
Here is a wall that talks about the history from 1916 to the present day. Here you can chart the history and progress of the zoo over the years. This is an exhibit that houses reptiles like snakes. One fact about snakes is that you may know that a snake is probably poisonous if it has a triangle shaped head. Unless you are an expert in identifying snakes, I would just leave all of them alone. A tortoise is another type of reptile, it grows large, lives a long time and moves slow. A lot of these snakes have triangle heads. Sometimes learning about a food chain or a food web can give you an understanding of what animals like to eat, if it is meat or plants. He's just sitting there. That is a big snake. That's a big boy, yeah. Outside the park is the Balboa Park Railroad that is a train for little kids. The Zootique shop is where you can buy themed items of the San Diego Zoo as souvenir fees go to support the zoo's conservation efforts. I recommend putting the San Diego Zoo as one of the things to visit if you are planning a trip to San Diego. You cannot come to San Diego without visiting the world's number one rated zoo. You will not be disappointed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and follow my Instagram account for more content in the near future. This is JT on the Go signing off.